us our money. Give us our money. Mayhem on the Carnival Vista. Riot on the high seas. Well, that's that's been the story lately based on the Vista's beleaguered propulsion issue. But is that story correct? Some are suggesting that there's more to that story. This one's wild. You're going to dig this. Plus, plus we've got a, a ship brushing up against a, a baby iceberg. Is it time to call Celine Dion? Do, 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 do. That plus a whole lot more cruise news about views. Let's talk about it. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome to La Lido Loca. I am your host, Tony, here with the latest cruise news and views. It's for your face. For your face on Sunday, Sunday the 8th of September, 2024. How the heck are you got? Look, I, I got I to gotta share this with you. I, I, I got a, a piece of a wisdom today that I, I thought was too good to pass up. I was listening to a talk by a guy who participates in jujitsu. And uh, I'd never heard this before, but he said the reason that the belt colors change in jujitsu is because it, it represents uh, the blood, the sweat, the tears uh, going from a white belt to a black belt. Uh, you know, symbolically that, you know, as those things soil your belt, as you get experience, your belt goes from white to black. But then the other thing that he said that I really like is he said that black belts are really just white belts that kept showing up. That's heavy. That's heavy, man. How many times have we embarked on something and given up on it uh, only to, you know, feel despair when if we would have just kept showing up, we would have got what we needed? Um, yeah, I like it. Okay, uh, let, let's talk about the hubbub bub from the Carnival Vista. It's had a beleaguered month of August and into September as propulsion issues have made it so that that cruise ship could not perform its itinerary. Uh, one cruise is canceled so that they can go and work on this cruise ship. I think it was the cruise that was supposed to start yesterday. But this footage has been flying around from the August the 10th cruise where people were up in arms, almost riotous, as it were, because they were told as they got on board the cruise ship that they would no longer be able to go on a really nice bucket list cruise instead uh, less than a bucket list cruise. The cruise in question where the August the 10th video was taken, where people were being riotous, it was supposed to go to Aruba, Curacao, uh, Turks and Caicos. When they got on the cruise ship that day, when they came to embark, they were told that because of propulsion issues, they weren't going to be able to go to those ports. Instead, they would be going to Nassau, Princess Keys, Freeport and Half Moon K. And certainly that is a downgrade of that cruise. And really that's essentially the catalyst for what started the riot. But uh, apparently the riotous video that we know doesn't really tell the whole story. There's a cruise blogger out there, come cruise with me, reached out to Carnival and got some interesting additional details, shall we say. Carnival responded to a request for information from them and the quote is this, the Carnival Vista video taken on August 10th when guests first learned of a revised itinerary does not capture the fact that guests were giving a choice of disembarking with a full refund or staying for the cruise and receiving an onboard credit plus a future cruise credit. The vast majority chose to stay on board and continue with the cruise. So there was a choice given. Uh, of course, horrible news delivered. Your bucket list cruise is going to be altered because of propulsion issues. We understand if you're upset, you can skip the cruise and get a refund, take that money, do another cruise, or you can stay on board and we'll give you onboard credit to the tune of $400. And then they were also given a future cruise credit uh, of varying amounts depending on the cabin booked and all of that. I can speak firsthand that this is how Carnival operates. On my very first cruise in April of 2017, I went on the Carnival Fantasy out of Mobile, Alabama, and guess what? It had propulsion issues. We were supposed to have just a real short cruise, go to Cozumel, Mexico. We got on the cruise ship like at one o'clock in the afternoon. And by eight o'clock at night, we were still at the dock in Mobile questioning what was going on. The announcement was made. Hey, look, uh, you know, we got engine issues. We couldn't fix it. We tried to fit. We couldn't fix it. If you'd like, you can get off the cruise ship right now for a 100% refund, or you can stay on board. We're going to give you some onboard credit. 
Uh, we're also going to give you a 100% future cruise credit that you can use toward your next cruise. And we weighed it out and we decided that we were gonna stay on the cruise ship. And maybe I'm just old school, but once I decided in my mind that I was gonna take the offer that was presented to me, then that was it. Like, what do I have to complain about? Like I had choice A and choice B and I chose choice B and now am I gonna riot? Now, there's a lot of other nuance there. I don't mean to be dismissive of the people's anger. Uh, certainly, you know, did that include uh, reimbursement for travel expenses? It's, it's a tough deal when you get on the cruise ship and something changes immediately without warning. And, you know, for Carnival's part, I think the indication was that they had really tried to fix the propulsion so that they didn't have to change the itinerary and then the itinerary changed. Probably sounds like I'm being a little too much of a fanboy for the cruise space. I, I want equity in everything. And I, I think that we have to level set our expectations and just know that cruise lines, to, you know, to the letter of the law, they don't have to give you anything. Stuff breaks down, itineraries change, those kind of things happen. We've all essentially signed a contract that says tough, tough, but uh, Carnival being a business, smartly so, they want to keep people happy and you know that tough's not going to be something to keep customers satisfied. So it does sound like, and, and like I said, I've had personal experience where they do try to do something to ease the pain. But uh, certainly if you look at the Riot videos, the Mayhem videos, it did not seem like the options were the salve that, that calmed those people. I don't know, did, did, who's right, who's wrong here? Um, uh, you know, I, I guess it's good to get the rest of the story out and some other information. But again, I think if, if you're given a choice and you make a choice, then you gotta live with the choice, but uh, maybe not. Maybe not. What do you think? Cruise news story number two, and I hope you got 20 euros in your pocket. That's the way I'm gonna start all of these stories where you're gonna have to pay more money. It's done, been decided that if you go to Greece, specifically Santorini and Mykonos, that it's gonna cost you 20 euros more because of over tourism. Uh, Greece came out, one of the leaders over there, and said, hey, look, everybody's saying we got an over-tourism problem. We got a, Well, we don't really have an over-tourism problem, except in a couple places over there in Mykonos and Santorini. And you know whose fault that is? The cruise ships. And so now they're going to levy a tax. The tax man cometh. I'm the tax man. Yeah, I'm the tax... Shout out Ludacris. They're gonna levy a tax against cruisers. Again, I think these taxes, it's not like they're gonna be standing there at the at the end of the thing, uh, you know, like, hey, you know, welcome to Greece, can I get 20 euro? I'm pretty sure that that tax is gonna be passed on to the cruise lines and then it'll eventually work its way down to you. But apparently the money is going to be earmarked for local communities to work on infrastructure, that kind of thing. The debate rages on. Again, sometimes this conversation is better left unsurfaced, right? Just your price goes up if you want to go to Greece, that's good. But it could leave, you know, I think the rhetoric leaves a little bit of a sour taste. And, you know, it's like, hey, I'm willing to go to Greece and pay money and see these local communities and try to invest in the local communities, but you don't want me. Uh, and now my cruise to Greece costs a little more. Um, I still want to go to Greece, so I, I don't know. Like, it, you know, do you want me? Do you not want me? Uh, but yeah, if you're going to Mykonos, Santorini, get ready to shell out 20 more euros. I don't know what that is in U.S. Somebody do the conversion. Uh, okay, uh, cruise news story number three, a quickie. The Disney Wonder, this cruise ship was built in the last century. It was built in the same time that Henry Ford came up with the Model T. Not, I mean, that's probably not fair. The Disney Wonder uh, came into service back in 1999, the last year of the, you know, of the 1900s. And now it's celebrating its 25th anniversary. It's an interesting thing. We've had some conversations about 30-year-old cruise ships struggling. But if you look at these Disney cruise ships that are 25 years old, the Magic was its sister ship, came out in 1998. Both of those ships are in pretty good shape. I was on the Magic. You could tell it was a little dated. But for a 30-year-old cruise ship, 25-year-old you know, cruise ships, they're doing pretty good. Disney's expanding their fleet. They've got four more ships, I think, in the run book. They bought that ship that went out of business over there in Asia, and they're building a big ship. So they're trying to expand the fleet. I didn't think about the age of the Magic and the Wonder. Are they expanding up to four, six, eight ships? So maybe then these older ships jettison out. I don't know. I haven't seen the story yet, but that does seem to be the life cycle of those ships. 
Um, yeah, uh, th there you go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Disney magic. It's not the magic. Happy birthday, Disney wonder. Ugh. Happy birthday. Okay. Um, I guess we're talking about, I said Asia, right? So let's, let's talk about something else. Big announcement from MSC Cruise Line that the MSC Eurebia is slated to return to the Middle East in 2025 and 2026. Look, I know this is a little contentious. Uh, every time I talk about the Middle East, uh, there's going to be some comments about human rights. I get that. There's going to be some pretty na you know, nationalistic comments, that kind of thing. But this is what I believe. I believe that if you can, go to all the places in the world and take whatever is in you, the goodness, the light, the, the freedom, the democracy, whatever you want to take with you, take it and plant it right there where you go. You could do it silently. You could step on the ground. Like I went to Cuba. And I looked at the people and I felt bad for the people. And I said, come on, at least we're here showing something different. That's why I believe that you have to travel. Not everybody has to be like that. But Eurebia going to go back to three big ports of call for embarkation ports, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, and Doha. And I tell you what, I got to get my buddy Don Terrace on the telephone. We're always looking for the bucket list. Many times we've mentioned Dubai. I would, I would like to go there just to see the area and again, just be whatever's in us, just be there. I know it's not for everybody, uh, but if you're into it and uh, you like MSC, the things are happening 2025, 20, 2026. 20, There's even going to be like a big, cool 28 night voyage that takes you from Northern Europe to Dubai, which I haven't looked at the ports on that. Probably fantastic. There you go. Now I got a couple more stories for you. One's about a disgruntled, loyal passenger. I'm a platinum. I'm, I'm upset. One of those stories. And then we got to talk about the little uh, Titanic moment for the Carnival Splendor. Do, 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 do. But before I do that, let me quickly invite you to subscribe. If you like staying up to date with everything going on in cruising, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss out on any of these episodes. Thank you in advance. All right, there's some uh, highfalutin vapor over there on Carnival uh, that's uh, that's causing a, a big old stank about the vape. This is an interesting phenomenon. So the article that I'm reading actually lays out some statistics that I hadn't heard straight from the CDC. Is everybody still upset with the CDC? Dirk Nabbit Street. Our trusted colleagues at the CDC said back in 2005, 19 years ago, that 21 out of every 100 adults smoke you smoke, 21%. But then if you look at the number from 2021, that, uh, you know, the number has decreased 12 out of every 100. So around 12%. You got to remember back in the time of my grandparents, like even babies, I think were smoking, like it was 89% smokers, everybody, they're giving you smoke. They're giving you, you know, it was like health food back then. Of course, that's changed. We know better than that. We know that it's cancer causing and people are smoking less and less. A lot of people have left that smoking life and they have become vapors. And well, there's some vapors that were on a carnival cruise that felt like they should not have been lumped in with the smokers. It's like the sharks and the jets. They're like, we're not the same people. I'm a vapor, they're a smoker. And I believe I deserve different rights than a smoker, but that's not the way they do it on most cruise lines. Most cruise lines lump the vapors and the smokers together and um, th th this guy writes a tirade out to Carnival brand ambassador John Heald. Don't you know who I am? I got friends that are gold and I'm platinum. I went platinum selling rhymes. I know people of the higher, I'm the, I'm the man. I'm the man and I'm a vapor and I will no longer be treated poorly because I'm a vapor. The vaping is not smoking. It does not set off the fire alarm. It's different. It's a, and I, I demand to be able to vape wherever I want. And well, John Heald said, uh, how about no? How about no? For right now, Mr. Vapor, you are considered a smoker. And for the other people that don't want a big cherry vape ripped in their face in the elevator, uh, you need to only vape where smokers can smoke. I don't know. Is that fair? Is you know, is it fair to lump the vapors and the smokers together? A lot of times, vaping is the path out of smoking, and there's something good about that, right? Because you know, we we want people to quit smoking, and ideally, we would probably want people to quit vaping, and all that's a process. But um, do do you think uh, lumping them in the vapors and the smokers? Do you think that's good or bad? Uh, Carnival says it's all the same dust. Those them's the rules, baby. Uh, uh, you know, rip a vape on that. How about that? Okay, 
Uh, here's here's the uh, scary moment, and I've saw a lot of this on TikTok. I, I probably should have pulled a TikTok clip, but uh, if you want to go to some sort of form of social media that's got short form and look for Splendor and Iceberg, and you'll see this. The Splendor brushed up against, just a few days ago in the Tracy Arm Fjord, brushed up against a small block of ice. Uh, like they, they didn't even call it a growler, which is what you call a small iceberg. It certainly wasn't a big iceberg like the one that I saw in Greenland. Gratuitous iceberg shot insert here. <laughs> It wasn't like that. It was just a little chunk of ice. Splendor did run up against it. Like if you watch the social media, they're like, oh, we're gonna hit it. They ran up into it, uh, but fortunately uh, no harm was done. Uh, the crew stopped and they inspected and they checked out the ship. Uh, there was no need to start playing the fiddle on the top deck, that kind of thing. Uh, man, Titanic's a sad story. I hate to even joke about it, even though that was built in the, and sailed in the same century as the carnival, not the carnival, but the Disney Wonder. What I'm trying to say here is there was a little brush with ice, probably pretty interesting for people that were on board, but no no harm done. And uh, everybody's good, there was no share. The thing that bothers me about Titanic though is, look, I know it's a movie, but how long did Jack stay handcuffed in that? Wouldn't he have had hypothermia? Forget he didn't get on the raft. I don't think he would have survived that whole handcuffed in the cold water part. And the perfect storm, it says at the beginning, based on a true story, but everybody died. So did the guy really get eaten by a shark? Okay, um, happy Sunday, everybody. Uh, watch the recommended video next. Hit the like button. See you on the Lido. Bye.